you're on mute. Um, if you guys got questions or something pops up during it, just hit, hit the chat. Throw a question out there, um, throw a comment out there, whatever. But that's how, um, if you guys got something to add, go ahead. We like that. Like you guys starting to communicate on your own and understanding that, like, you know, you, you have a voice in this too. We've talked about that before in previous ones. But uh, real good. Coach Brewer's on with us tonight. Um, not sure if everyone on the, on the call knows Brewer's background, but went to Lyons Township. Um, Ended up going to Bradley University down in Peoria, Missouri Valley, Valley Division I. And then uh, got invited to the Cape Cod League, did really well there, and ended up getting drafted in the eighth round by the New York Yankees. So, you know, when we talk about the big board today, the junkyard dog, that's, you know, the toughness that the junkyard dog presents. Um, obviously, you guys walk into a junkyard and there's a dog there, you know, you're, I'm afraid, you're afraid, we're all afraid. That's the mentality that we got to come up with today. That's the mentality that we have to um, subtly and humbly get to. And Brewer, real quick, talk about your experience when, you know, going from a school like Bradley to the Cape Cod League where, you know, yeah, you're surrounded with dudes from LSU, from, you see, you know, big, big, like big guys, and you're kind of like, all right, you got to prove your sticks a little bit um, and earn your stripes with these guys. But talk about your mentality walking into that Cape Cod League coming uh, off of your sophomore season from Brad. Yeah, so I mean, for you guys who don't know what the Cape League is, it's, it's hands down probably the best college summer league out there. I mean, you get dudes out there from every big school, um, you're facing guys throwing 90, 95 every single night uh, with 30 scouts behind the, behind the fence gunning these guys. So for me going out there at small school, um, nobody really knowing me, um, I just said it's a win-win for me. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to play as hard as I can, and I'm going to show them kind of what small schools are, are made of and kind of what Midwest boys are made of. And I just took that mentality. I had fun. I, I know a lot of guys who went out there similar situations to me, had terrible summers. Some didn't make it through the summer. Um, I ended up having the best summer of my life. I mean, I made the all-star team out there. I got invited to take batting practice at Fenway. That's what they used to do that. They used to invite like eight guys per team to go to Fenway for a day. Um, so I got to take batting practice on Fenway, which was sweet. Um, and it, it was just an awesome summer, man. I ended up hitting just under 300. I was top 10 in almost every offensive category and kind of became known as the guy who just hits. Like, everywhere we went, they'd be like, oh, who's that kid? They're like, I don't know. He goes to some school called Bradley, and he just hits. Like, he plays everywhere on the field. Uh, but, yeah, he plays the game hard. He plays the right way. And I always just left impressions. And for me going out there, knowing I was going to play in front of that many scouts because they're going to be out there watching the arms, like I figured if I can play at a different level, it's going to give me a chance to get drafted and drafted at a high position. And, uh, you know, it ended, thankfully ended up working out for me. Um, I contributed that a lot to the way I was raised and, and just growing up. I had three older brothers, all three played college baseball, um, you know, fighting with those dudes my entire life kind of kind of molded me the way I was and put me in positions like I was on the field uh, and gave me opportunities to succeed just because of the mentality I took as I approached everything. Like, it didn't matter. I, I always felt comfortable playing with older kids um, and, and saw that more as a challenge and not really a roadblock. Yeah. And, and I think – you know, it's a good story to kind of start this whole conversation uh, because, you know, you got to you gotta understand that everything you get in life, baseball field, not. You got to have this competitive mentality. Um, you got to want to – you got to be willing to compete. You got to want to compete. And you got to understand that, like, you know, it starts from in between the years. And I got, I got these, these three bullet points um, in order for a reason because – in order to get to this junkyard dog level, let's call it, um, first and foremost, you got to think tough and you got to be right in between the years. You got to understand that this game is set out and it's one on one, right? You're either pitching or you're hitting. You either win or you lose, right? 
if the ball's hit to you, you got to make the play. That's on you. If you got to back up a bag, you got to know you got to hit a cutoff man, whatever the case is. But when you show up to the park and you know that I want to see the best pitcher, I want to face the best pitcher, I want the dude that committed at 14 years old that's going to LSU and he throws 90 already and everyone my age throws 83. Man, screw that. That's the dude you want to face every day. That's the dude that you want the most at bats with. And it goes back to the mentality where, you know, I tell, I, I told all my uh, youth teams when I met with them this year, man, you know, I don't care if this dude had the nastiest stuff you ever seen in your life. You go back to the dugout and say, man, this guy's weak. Man, I saw his stuff. I just missed it. But you know what mentality that that puts the rest of the dugout in? You go back to the dugout and say, man, I couldn't even see that pitch. And I felt like I had no time. And all. Now, now all of a sudden you just created seven more outs in the dugout. Like that's not the mentality that we're looking for. That's not thinking tough. Okay. Thinking tough is understanding that, yeah, you're going to compete, but at the end of the day, that's what you want and you want the best and you're looking for the best. You're not shying away from anything. So it starts in between the years thinking tough. And then in between each of these, I just put compete um, because I feel like that's the root of all three of these things is just being a plain out competitor. All right. You are going to be junkyard dog tough. If you know how to compete the right way. Um, Rue, you got anything about that you want to add about thinking tough? Yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've talked to the younger guys a little bit earlier about this too. And, and, since I was in college, I, I used to listen to a guy, Steve Springer, who does a lot of hitting talks. And the one thing I always took from him is compete with confidence. Like, trust what you're doing. You guys put in the work. And if you put the work in, trust it. Compete with confidence, man. If you step in the box, and, and we've all been there, and I, I had a skid in pro ball. I went four for 58. So imagine walking up to the dish 58 times and getting four hits. And thinking about what mental stage I'm in, I mean, half the bats I walked up there and I was like, dude, I got no chance. Like, you find a way to get through the hard times in this game and say, hey, I'm going to battle through the tough. And I know I'm going to come out on top of this because I have a good mental game. And I know I'm good. And I'm going to compete with confidence. You're going to have a fighting chance. But the moment you let between the ears kind of slip to – I'm defeated, or this guy's better than me, or, or he's got a pitch I can't hit, or you're on the mound and you think that dude in the box is better than you. Like, you lost. You're beat. It's the mindset that every time you step foot on the field, like, you're the best player out there. And if you aren't the best player out there, like, you're going to at least compete and present yourself to be the best player out there, and you're going to do something better than everybody else. No doubt. And, and – just while he was talking, for me, it's all about body language. Like, you could be a, a Division One guy and you could be a dude, but I know when you're well, – I could pinpoint when you're not going well. A hundred out of a hundred times because you're not playing with the energy. You're not playing with the chip on your shoulder. You're not playing with the attitude. You just – you know, you'll take a swing after you're, um, you know, like you said, going through a slump, and then it just def – it, you're deflated. Like – Again, we talked about staying neutral. We talked about your zones last call. Like, you have to stay neutral in this game. You can't get too high. You can't get too low. You've got to be ready for whatever's next. And you you got to be present. So, for me, with the high school guys, it's all, like, thinking tough is body language, right? You should never look defeated. I don't care if you're in the worst slump you've ever been in your life. you got to bring energy. you got to say, I'm going to play great defense. you got to put your mind elsewhere and know that you're going to get out of it. You have to know you're going to get out of it, okay? So thinking tough is number one. Boom, number two. It's not about playing the game. Everyone likes the game. Everyone likes the tournaments. Everyone likes playing in front of scouts. No one, or not, not everyone, is at the same men mental capacity when we talk about practice. So you got to practice tough before you play tough. That's going to create good habits. What does that mean? Every time uh, Coach Brew and I run a high school session, we, we always challenge you guys before. Who's going to be the best player tonight? Who's going to be the best player on the field tonight? Who's going to be the best player on the turf tonight? That's a challenge for us 
So understand that you need to practice tough, okay? Before you can play tough, you need to practice tough. And that's why we challenge you at each and every day when you guys would come into the dome. I'd see most of you the same day, all right? Who's gonna be, who's gonna hold themselves to a higher standard? Who's gonna push the group? Who's gonna set the bar tonight? And you know, some days were better than others, but at the end of the day, you know, nine times out of 10, it, I could point to one guy that said, look, you set the pace today. And that's what we need out of you. And that's what we need out of your teammates. So, you know, everybody can show up on game day. Not everyone can show up every day. And like, especially in um, the current situation that we're in, guys, you, you, you're going to go two ways after this thing's clear, right? Once we start playing again. But some of you can really improve your game and have been improving your game. And you're coming out of this thing a completely different baseball player. That's your goal is coming out of this thing going, man, look at, like, he must have done something. Wow, this guy can, you know, he's, his swing looks better. His, his throwing looks better. He, he really can command an off-speed pitch now. Whatever the case is, you got to come out of this thing better and you got to wake up with the mentality that you're going to practice tough, okay? And if it's not, if you didn't do it today, then you start tomorrow, right? you got to be a tough SOB every single day during this time, and you got to learn how to practice tough. Brew, go ahead. Yeah, and to that point, like, I, I think practice tough is practice with a purpose. And, and the purpose will practice, like, showing up and saying, this is what I need to get work on. Like, what you guys are doing right now, what Coach Knapp alluded to, like, you should all have a routine by now. Like, we're too deep into this thing that if you don't have a routine, like, you're, you're late to the party. Not saying you can't catch up, but you're late to the party. Like, you should be on a routine right now getting prepared for, for June. Like, Technically, June is still a possibility. You should be ready for June and doing all your work. If you're a pitcher, you're throwing bullpens with a purpose. Uh, uh, you should be extending your innings. If you're hitting keyword flips, whatever you're able to do, it's with a purpose, man. Watch a big leaguer take a round of BP. Like, he's not just hitting a ball to hit a ball. He is hitting a ball with a purpose. Maybe his last round of batting practice he just lets it go and just tries to put on a show and hit some balls in the stands for the fans. But like rounds one through three, there's a purpose behind it. You watch an infielder in, during VP taking ground balls. They're doing things with a purpose. So like when you guys are practicing, like even once we get back into this thing, like I think back to when I first started out there with you high school guys and going through practice. And I used to tell you guys all the time, like it's too quiet, like have some fun, bring some energy. Do something with some sort of emotion. Create some challenges. Like, pick out five guys and say, hey, air competition today on the infield. Uh, outfielders, we started to do some competition stuff and threw some throws towards the, the uh, post. And we started to see certain guys were better at it than others. Like, it just became guys wanted to win more. And when guys want to win, you elevate your game. So if you look at your own personal self of practice, and you say, I'm trying to elevate myself to be the best, then you should practice that way. It, you know, we talk about it all the time. Practice makes perfect. Nah, perfect practice is what we're hunting. Like, you need to find a way to be perfect. Take a ground ball. Treat it like a game. Like, you shouldn't feel a ground ball unless we're doing a drill and pat this thing 30 times and then lob it over. Like, it should be like a guy's getting down the line. And when the guy's getting down the line, it's the fastest dude you've ever played against. And if you're always playing clockwise with the fastest guy in your brain, like when you get on a field, it becomes easy because then you just slow the game down. And as you guys get older, like you guys who are freshmen who are walking into your freshman year of high school, like the game was about to pick up a little bit. And you guys who are seniors in high school around here who grow into college next year, like the game is going to pick up a pace next year. And if you can't find a way to play at that pace, you're going to get left behind. So like for you guys, it's just understanding if you learn how to practice at a different pace or, or kind of as Tyler said this year, be uncommon, like do things different. Like you're going to find a way to beat the average kid. Yeah. And, you know, understanding that 
the work you put in is the output you're going to get in the game. That the, the, the earlier you could recognize that formula, the better it's going to the better it's going to be for you guys in the long haul. All right. Think tough. Practice tough. Compete. 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 That's it. Like if you learn how to be competitive in anything that you do, it's going to carry over. You got to get mad if you lose checkers. You got to you got to take it personal if you get a D or an F on a on a paper or a test. That's not acceptable, okay? D's or F's is like a hundred, well, buck fifty batting average, right? Everyone on this call would not be acceptable, not want a, a batting average of a buck fifty this summer. So we got to learn this competitiveness, and then it's going to show up in every every avenue. Think tough, practice tough, and then at the end, play tough. And like, look, we talk about the word tough, right? Let's talk about the word tough for a second. And it's not. It, it's it is fight, but it's not physical fight, right? It's it's mentally fighting, it's process fighting, and then all of a sudden it's just being the absolute um, grinder on the baseball field, right? It's it's being covered in dirt from head to toe. It's being uh, showing up with an un, a, a relentless pursuit of energy. It's showing up with a great attitude. It's showing up being a positive teammate doing the little things that we always talk about that really are the big things. That's playing tough, okay? Notice I didn't say four for four. I didn't say you got to show up and strike everyone out. You know, blah, blah, blah. No, I want the consistent guy that shows up that I know is going to do all the little things correctly. I know he, like, there are certain guys in the lineup. We've touched on this before. When Brewer and myself show up with the lineup card, like there's just certain guys that I cannot take out of the lineup. Why? Because they are tough winning baseball players. Plain and simple. There's no other if, ands, or way about it. I know at some point there's certain players that are going to do something over the course of the game to help me win. I don't know what it is. Could be something in the field. Could be something on the bases. Could be a tough at bat. Could be a big hit. I don't know what it is, but he, you're going to do something, right? That's the baseball player you strive to be. That's the tough baseball player. I have, I have conversations with college coaches, and I'm like, what, do you, what, what defines a offer? What defines a yes? Okay? That means they show up, they're watching you play, and they're trying to decide if they want to offer you or not a college scholarship to play baseball for their university. Are they tough? Are they a great teammate? Right? Are they, do they do the intangibles correctly? Okay. They don't care whether you go for it. Now, skills have to be there. Tools have to be there. All that stuff. Are you tough? Can you deal with adversity? Can you deal with failure? You know, how, how mentally tough are you? Like you, that is 70, 80% of the criteria. Once you meet the skill set that they're looking for. Okay. Once you meet the skill set that they're looking for, if you could check this box, this box, and this box, it is a yes, okay? You will get an offer. But this is a lot harder to do than just coming up with the plan and trying to execute it. you got to perform. But again, when you play hard and you play the right way and you play like a grinder, this is all going to show up. Brewer, go ahead. Yeah, and I think to Nap's point, like especially for you high school guys, uh, you know, some of you guys are headed to college, some of you guys are committed, some of you guys are still chasing that. Like understanding what colleges are looking for and understanding that like there's certain factors that can that can make you win that offer. Like if you're competing against another guy, we talk about in the classroom, grades are gonna come into factor. So if you got better grades than kid or that kid has the same grades as you, like okay, we got to look at the next thing. And if on-field toughness becomes a separating factor and you lose, that is something you can control. You can control how you play the game, how you show up. Like, call it a grinder, call it what you want, dude. Call it, I, I call it the gamer or, or an it factor. Like, what, what does he bring? He's just – he's an it guy. David Eckstein, like, I think of a guy, David Eckstein, five foot four, 
uh, no business being in the big leagues and is a World Series MVP and used to crow hot balls from shortstop to get across the diamond. Like, he doesn't make it to that level unless he plays a certain way. And his mentality was, I'm just going to play as hard as everybody. I'm not as big as everybody. Why I can play harder. I can get on and off the field. Dustin Pedroia is another, like, more modern-day your guy's age that, like, he's an example. Like, I remember 12 years in the league, there was a play, bad throw going across from short, nobody on base, and Dustin Pedroia is there backing up the throw, bounces off a brick, uh, bounces off the brick wall, gets it and throws the dude out in second. They interview him after a game, and they're like, well, what were you doing there? He's like, I've been doing it for 12 years. Like, I do that every single time. Like, there's a lot of second basemen at your age, big leagues, high school, college, whatever, that won't go back that throw up. And he does it every time, and now it gets caught on tape. And it's like the big out-of-nowhere play. It's like, no, he's just doing the right thing, and he's playing the game the right way. He leaves the game dirty. He He's able to play and then hold other guys on his team accountable to play that way. Like, I think you guys need to start to understand if you play a certain way, and you have a mission and you're one of these junkyard dogs and one of your teammates isn't carrying his weight, like you have the ability to now get on a guy to start playing this way. Because if you do it every single day, they can't tell you that you don't. Right. And I think that's a big thing. Like I got in a big argument, just a quick story for you. When I was in double A with a guy, I hit a sack fly and he was jogging home, and the dude got thrown out a third for the last out of the inning, and he didn't score. So not only did I not get my RBI, but instead of being 0 for 0 with an RBI and a sack fly, now I'm 0 for 1 with no RBI. Like, that stuff means things. Like, driving in runs is what gets you paid. So, like, at that level, like, to me, now you're taking money off my plate. And I got in the guy's face, and there was a big uproar in the locker room, but, like, Guys were like, Brewer plays that way. He plays hard. He runs hard 90s. He's sprinting on and off the field. Like, he can do that kind of stuff. So, like, you guys understand if you play a certain way, you practice a certain way, and you have a good head on your shoulder with a mission, like, you got a chance to achieve success. Yeah. And, you know, that's a really good story because, um, like, you got you to gotta earn the respect of your teammates. We're going to talk about that in a second. But that's a, you know, if you play the game the right way and you have these intangibles that, you know, that's the toughness that we want out of you guys is, you know, like getting thrown out a third on a sacrifice fly that, that you got no business getting thrown out a third. That's a selfish play. That's just, that, that's, a, that's not being a good teammate. So um, as you guys progress in this game, you know, you got to understand that you're, you're, you're trying to help your teammates out. Just like if, you know, if Brew's on second base or Brew's on third base and, you know, that's somebody else's RBI, well, he's going hard for his teammate. You know what I mean? And then at the end of the day, that's how you earn respect for uh, in the clubhouse and, and, and with, with your teammates in that regard, which is really, really good. Think tough, practice tough, play tough. All right. So we have this tough mentality, the junkyard dog in us. But at the end of the day, all this stuff means nothing if we're not humble, okay? It means nothing because you want to be the baddest SOB in between the lines. You want to be the baddest SOB when you're training. You want to be a bad dude, okay? Bottom line. But at the end of the day, if you're not, if you're not respecting your parents, if you're not um, – cleaning the dugout up after the games, if you're not taking the bat bags and the balls, and if you're the guy that just grabs his shit and leaves, then guess what? All this other stuff doesn't, doesn't matter because you're off the list. They want the yes, sir, no, sir. Yes, coach, no, coach. Hey, coach, I'm going you know, to try my best. What do you need me to work on? Whatever. If you don't have that aspect to where you could turn that switch off and be a good human, be a great teammate, Okay, do the little things that some guys might think they're too good to doing, like picking cups up or sweeping seeds up after uh, a game or picking the trash up or, you know, not having your coach carry all the gear back to his car, even though you got your hands full. Like, that's what it's about. When you can do all of these three, all of these four things and then be understand where your roots are 
understand what this means to be humble because the minute you start thinking you're better than everyone else and you're better than the game, it's going to come back. Okay. I've seen it a gazillion times. As soon as you th think your shit doesn't stink and I I'm already signed, I'm already committed. I got my offer. Um, guess what, man, you're going to show up and you're going to get eaten by these junkyard dogs that are working and that do all these th three things, but understand they're not bigger than the game, right? They understand that there's a, there's a respect that needs to go on. There's a the respect for our, you know, ourself, respect for our teammates, respect for our opponents, coaches, all that stuff. Right. But at the end of the day, you have to be humble in all this. You want to be a bad dude. Okay. I want to walk into a dark alley and the guys I want to take with me are the guys that are not going to turn around. And leave. You know, I don't give a shit if we're going to get our ass kicked, but we're going to fight because we're not going to back down. And the dudes that stay with me are the dudes that are the junkyard dogs. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to be humble. That's the biggest point in this whole thing. All this toughness is great. We got to compete every day, but we got to understand what it is to be humble. Um, Brew, go ahead. You had some good stuff to last talk on this one. Yeah, I think your best point you hit on on this is, is the humble and the the respect and doing the right things. Like, I can't stand it as a coach when dudes just, like, game ends, they roll out. Like, the guy who sits around and helps clean up or the guy who's, who's looking to do the extra thing. Like, you're going to be the guy who, when a college calls and says, hey, what do you got on this guy? And everybody's going to talk about your gameplay first, but then what's going to be the deciding factor? Hey, man, this dude's a yes or no, sir, guy. Uh, he's going to do whatever he can to help his teammates. He's going to do whatever he can to help you. Um, you're not going to have to worry about him on and off the field. Like, that kind of stuff goes a long way. The, the respect you, you earn from people, and it's not just given. Like, some of you guys will come in, and let's say you're a guy who gets recruited or – or you're, you're a number one draft pick, and you think, like Coach said, like your shit doesn't stink. Like, that game can eat you up and spit you out. Like, I'm always rooting for the dude who isn't the high-profile guy or he is the undersized guy because he's the one trying to get more. And, and he's kind of learned to be humble because he hasn't been given everything. Like, if you've been given everything and you have all the ability, like, you should run with that. And learn that, like, that's a reward for you. And, and not everybody has it. Not everybody can throw the ball 90-95. Not everybody can launch the ball out of the park. Like, not everybody has that high exit velo. So, like, if you have those tools, like, utilize them. Be grateful you have them. But don't take them for granted. Like, don't take yourself for granted. If you don't have any of those tools or your average across the board, like, what you can always do is, hey, man, I'm going to respect the game. I'm going to respect my coaches. I'm going to respect my teammates. And I'm going to do all the right stuff. Like, we talk, and I'm sure you guys should all know this, but the five tools in baseball, like, myself personally and a lot of guys in this game, like, I was average across the board. So when you're average across the board, if you don't play the game the right way, you don't run through the wall, uh, you don't sprint on and off the field, you don't give that hard 90, you aren't that good teammate, like, Nobody's going to respect you because what do you bring? What do you offer? So, like, finding what you offer and what you're able to do yourself and then carry that to the team. Um, I told the younger guys this, like, you see it a lot in young, like, youth sports, like, youth teams. Like, pitcher will be on the field, dude, hit the ball. Guy makes an error. He's pouting, pitchers throws his hands up, mommy's yelling from the stands, it's not your fault. Like, all that stuff is bad, dude. There's zero respect going on. Like, if I'm the pitcher and the dude behind you makes an error, like, it's not like he's out there kicking those things on purpose, dude. Pick him up. Or if I'm the shortstop and the second baseman makes an error, pick him up, dude. Get him out of there. Get him back to his happy place. Tell him to get the next one or roll a double play. Something that gets that guy back to reality and out of his mental, you know, poor mental state. But, like, Knapp and I talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, it, it's kind of more to that, you know, dark alley, who's coming with you kind of mindset. Like, I view of it like brothers. Like, back to the initial point. Like, I had three other brothers. Like, I knew walking anywhere with those <coughs> dudes, if something random were to happen, like, 
there were four of us going to war together. So if you view it like, hey, dude, you got eight other dudes on the field with you and you start to treat each other like brothers and you say, if that dude's in trouble, I got his back or, or we're going to go to war against whoever, like you got eight dudes playing this game at a different level, respecting the game, like you're going to come out on top, man. And, and I think that's a big point of like what we're trying to cover with you guys. Um, obviously the mindset, how you practice and how you're playing but the more respect you have for yourself, your teammates, your coaches, your the, the game in general, like it'll elevate your game to a whole new level. Yeah, and and like I said, we talked about zones last week where you know we're never too high, we're never too low. We got to stay in the middle. But at the end of the day, when there's a genuine uh, care on your end for your teammates, that goes way farther than you know anything that when you're just playing for yourself. I really, really believe that. And that's why, you know, um, when, when, I've, when I've seen guys in, you know, not just the division one guys, but they're, I, I've known many division two, II, division three, NAIA players that, you know, would have given their left leg, their left nut, call it whatever you want, to play this game at the high le highest level. And they just went up like, I have so much respect for those guys that go about things the right way because they just love the game of baseball. We all know who they are. We all can think of an example of two where, you know, uh, Brew, you probably play with guys that had no business playing or being on the teams that you were on, but like they didn't care if they, that they didn't play. They just wanted to take batting practice. They wanted to, you know, they, they, they wanted to be a part of it. They were, they were lifers, man. And that like, like, I'm not saying everyone on this call is going to get there, but when you can appreciate the game, like the guys Brew and I are, are talking about right now, you respect the ability that everyone else has on this call and you respect the ability that you have much more because they, a lot of these dudes, they would kill for that ability and they, they just do things the right way. Brew, you know the guys I'm talking about? Yeah, like I, so like, it's funny you say that a kid who comes to my mind, a kid named Ryan Baker, who was a catcher out of Cincinnati who was five foot two and a little, I mean, ball of muscle. Like he looked like that uh, uh, orange dude from the um, Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know what I'm saying? Like just yeah. a little ball of muscle. He never played. He was always on the Phantom DL, but he was always like a bullpen catcher. And it's just, he loved the game. Great locker room guy. Uh, always trying to help other dudes. Always willing to do the extra mile. Like, and it kept him in the game for a long time. And he knew he wasn't going to play much. He thought he was better than guys. But, like, at the end of the day, it was always like, dude, you, you know you don't have the ability that that guy has. Like, you're not going to be a big league catcher. But if you keep on this path and you keep earning respect from all these guys high up in this organization, you could be the bullpen catcher in the big leagues. And being a bullpen catcher in the big leagues isn't a bad gig right. if you love the sport and you want to stick around it. So, like – as soon as you say that, that's the first name that comes to my mind. Um, I mean, there's plenty more guys, dude. Like, I find if you have passion for this game, there's always somewhere for you to be in it. Um, you guys are so young that you still have that opportunity to chase that dream you've been dreaming of since you first started playing this game. Um, I wish I could still throw a New York jersey on and, and still chase it. I can't. Um, I hope you guys all get a good opportunity to do it. But a lot of it's going to be up to you guys. And, and what's going on in this world right now, it's, it's messed up. Some of you guys are being stripped of your senior year of high school, which is it's messed up, and, and I feel for you. Um, it's going to make you stronger. And, and you guys should be pretty much caged animals when this thing gets released of wanting to play. Like, if you're doing the right thing and you really have that drive to play the sport, the moment they say go, like – you should be coming out like an animal uh, um, and an absolute beast or junkyard dog to fight for what you've been working for and waiting for. You and guys, I think that's gonna the, be, Yeah, you guys are going to be getting in the cars like you're playing your first eight U game again, which is great. You know, like it's just you're, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be up at 6 a.m. throwing your jerseys on when you don't need to be out of the house until 9. And, you know, that's – Hopefully that that's the one takeaway when this is over and we get to play again, like 
you'll never take, I, I'm really, really hoping that we never take another game for granted. I really hope that you never take another outing for granted and that bat for granted. And you just can sit there and put a smile on your face and play as hard as possible. Because like, that's what brings me pure joy when dudes are in the dog out and they're, they're, they got each other's back and I see guys smiling and we're able to, you know, we're able to just be in the dog out and be in the clubhouse. And like, that's what I miss, right? That's what I miss the most is I miss watching you guys play, but I'm, I miss competing. I miss competing and I'm, I miss being in the dugout and just listening to the crap that you guys talk about, but you know, we're going to get back there. But like, like Bruce said, man, you got to be like a junkyard dog on a chain that you're just ready to break. And that's got to be when you could, when you could live up to all this thing, respect, trust guys, they're earned. Okay. Like, the respect is like I respect every one of you guys until you disrespect me. It's real simple. I, I you like you're just you're just gonna earn my disrespect because I respect each and every one of you. And we could talk through things and all that other stuff, but the trust as a coach, okay, the trust is earned on the consistency of your play. That's it. It's real simple. I know who I want in the lineup because I've coached you for so long and I know what you're capable and I know the guys that are steady and I know the guys that are up and down. The guys that are steady are going to always be in the lineup. The guys that help can help me win in multiple facets of the game are always going to be in the lineup. But at the end of the day, respect and trust, two things that are earned. You know, and you don't have, like, listen, you just got to be respectful. Yes, coach, no coach. What do I need to work on? Like, those dudes that ask questions at a high school level, it shows that you care. If you can give me some feedback after this on, on what, like what we talked about, like, I, like that excites me because it's like you guys are thinking about it. You guys are applying it. Coach, uh, after the game, like, man, like how should I have went about this differently? Talk, let's talk through this play. When dudes come up to me, after the game or during the game and they they want to talk through things with me like all right man this guy cares i have so much respect for him because i know that it means something right it means something some of you guys aren't there yet because you're not that vocal but man you gotta you gotta get out of your comfort zone with that because that goes so much further than you guys will know and here's another thing you guys will learn OK, you guys will become better baseball players the earlier you learn to communicate with your coaches. All right. So. Um, hey, Nap, real quick. Yeah. And, and to his point, like that's going to elevate your guys game because. As, as a guy, like guys who evaluate players, like when you ask those questions, you're looking to learn and you're wanting to get better. If you don't ask. Like, you don't know. Like, this sport is great because you can always learn. Like, you can keep learning new stuff, and there's always new ways to do things and new fields. But if you don't ask, you don't know. So, like, as a coach, for a player to come up to us and ask us questions, all that is is baseball talk. Like, Nap and I could probably have a phone call for hours that would seem like 10 minutes and just talk baseball, hitting, pitching, fielding base running whatever it is we could just talk baseball and and that's the locker room talk that that's the the looking to learn aspect of the game that as young baseball players you guys need to to challenge yourself and say I want to get better I need to ask questions hey this situation happened this is what I did or this is what I thought is that right is that wrong is there a different way to look at this and you ask questions and you learn and everybody's gonna have different opinions on stuff. And what you start to do is you start to form your own opinion and you start to create your own baseball player. Like I always tell guys I hit with, you look at what Hunter Pence does and nobody's sitting there trying to teach what Hunter Pence is doing. Hunter Pence has had an ex exceptional career and he doesn't look good as a baseball player. So you can't tell me hitting's all one way and it's black and white, it's not. Hunter Pence hits because he's a competitive son of a bitch, dude, and it works. Yeah, he does some things right, but it's very unorthodox. But he, he is always looking to grow. He's always looking to 
better himself. And I think what Nap was just saying, like, if you guys start to challenge yourself and don't be timid or hesitant to ask those questions, like, you're going to learn and you're going to learn fast. Yeah, really, 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 really good. So, all right, if you guys don't um, screenshot this big board every time, you guys should. I, I try to post it on Twitter, so if you guys don't get it. But my point is, is like, look, bare minimum, if you could just screenshot every one of these and then just, you know, when you're scrolling through stuff or whatever, then you'll have this as a reference and you could be like, you know, just a little motivation, just a little side note on things, you know, next to your bed or whatever the case is. So, um, Brew, thanks for coming on. This has been really, really good. And uh, for sure, man. Thanks for having me. Good seeing you guys, man. I wish you guys all the best once we get going. Um, if you guys ever need anything from me, uh, I know my guys are on here, but even you other guys, like, dude, get my number from Nap. Get my number from Tyler. Like, I'm happy to help any of you guys, as I'm sure Coach Nap is. So, like, feel free to text me, call me, whatever. Uh, I'm always happy to talk baseball with anybody. Hey, 144 on the call today. That's really good. I'll see your ugly mugs on Sunday. Walter, get a haircut. Adios. Later, Nap. Later.